The purpose of this video is to go over the different research designs that have um, been presented beginning in Chapter 10 and in Chapter 11. In Chapter 10, which is the t-test for two independent sample means, we discuss the concept of between subject research design or between subject design and um, what that looked like. Um, I had given you an example where we have sample one and sample two And the participants in each of the samples are independent of each other, meaning they're different. So we may have participant A, B, C, and D. And in sample two, we have participants E, F, G, and H. So again, just the lettering gives us an indication that we have separate groups of individuals in both samples. Um, and again, this is referred to as a t-test for independent sample means. They're independent of one another. And there um, are some advantages and disadvantages of um, implementing these different research designs. For this one, the advantage is that um, it eliminates order effects. Order effects have to do or relate to when participants are exposed to particular treatment and then if they're used in the next level of that independent variable, the next condition, and are exposed to an additional treatment, that sometimes um, it's difficult to separate the effects of those treatments. So they may bring over some information with them into the next condition, which muddles the end results. We'll talk a little bit more about that with a specific example when I discuss um, the next research design that's applicable to a repeat measures t-test. But for now, we, we can understand the greatest advantage is that it eliminates order effects. Um, because the participants are different from each other and they only participate in one level of the independent variable. One level meaning they only get one treatment or exposure to one treatment. The disadvantage, the biggest um, or greatest disadvantage of this type of design is that it requires more participants. If any of you have um, conducted research or been asked to reply to a survey, um, you, you probably recognize how difficult it is to recruit individuals to participate in a research. So if you've ever been walking through a mall and you're asked to stop and, conduct, and complete a survey, most times we're unlikely to be generous with our time and we, we decline participation. So when you set up this type of research design, you're going to need more participants. So in this case, N1 would equal 4, which is very low for research. Um, technically, you wouldn't want anything less than 10. And N2 would equal 4. So total, we would need 8 individuals to participate in this research. And we'll see how that differs from the next research design that I'll discuss that's referred to as within subject design. Okay, so repeat measures design, which is um, chapter 11. It's a t-test using two samples, but those two samples are made up of the same individual. So it would look like sample one and then sample two. And we have participant A, B, C, and D. And then they move into the next condition and it's the same individual. So we have A, B, C, and D being exposed to the second treatment or level of the independent variable. So um, we can talk about the advantages and disadvantages as well here. The first advantage is that obviously it requires less individuals. So we have um, sample one, right, is equal to four. And then um, our sample two 
sample two is equal to four, but total, oops, total n value, total number of participants is equal to four. So even though it shows four and four and we'd have four scores in our first sample and four scores in our second sample, it's the same individuals. And we'll discuss you know, how we do those calculations when you have two different scores for the same individual. It's a process of computing the difference um, between those two values. But again, the advantage, um, a huge advantage is that it requires less individuals. As I mentioned before, it's, it's very difficult as a researcher to recruit members to participate in research. The next advantage is that this type of uh, research design is ideal for studying changes over time. So obviously if we're doing a, a study of um, the effects of something and we want to see how perhaps individuals perform at a um, baseline level and how they perform after a certain amount of time has passed. In other words, a before and after treatment um, scenario, you need the same individuals in the before treatment as you do in the after. So it's ideal for, ch for studying the changes over time. Changes over time require that we're collecting information on the same individual. So that would also include learning, um, um, variables that pertain to learning or development. The next um, advantage is that it reduces or eliminates individual differences. And what I mean by that is um, things that make us unique, um, our gender, our IQ, our GPA, um, our age, all of those things um, may have an effect on the dependent variable that we're measuring. And so when we're working with the same group of individuals, essentially we're holding all of those variables constant because they would be the same in sample one as they would be in sample two because it's the same individual. So if participant A um, is a female and has an IQ of 115, she's the exact same person in sample two. So again, when we think about other variables that can impact the dependent variable, this is an ideal research design because all of those variables are held constant. So if we can think about a variable that we are testing to improve, um, let's say GPA, we would want um, some consistency in the amount of GPA and the learning habits um, and capabilities of individuals that are perhaps exposed to a tutoring program that when we expose them to the tutoring program, we would assess them before and after and see if there's a change. Um, obviously having all of these other variables held constant helps illuminate the effects of the independent variable more so than if we were working with different individuals um, because they bring all these characteristics to the table and that contributes to the variation within the samples that sometimes muddles the end results. And finally, the disadvantage The disadvantage of this particular research design is what I referred to earlier as the order effects. The order effects. So uh, let's take the example of um, you know someone's trying to help you improve your golf score, and um, one of the research shows that there are different ways of improving your golf score. Let's just talk about this example here. We have um, a treatment that's referred to as relaxation techniques, or you um, use what we call visualization 
technique. So you visualize where that ball needs to go. In relaxation techniques, you're using some breathing exercises um, to help you focus so that you improve your golf, golf score, your golf game. So if these are the two treatment conditions, we recruit some individuals to participate in this research. And if we were to em, um, employ this within subject design, where they would first be exposed to relaxation techniques, and then we would measure their um, improvement, hopefully, in their golf game. And then, let's say, net the week after, they do that for a week, and then a week later, they, do, they learn this new visualization process. By the time they get to the second condition of that independent variable, they may be utilizing what they learned in the previous condition. Um, so they may be employing some relaxation techniques and now using the visualization, so they're combining the two. And so when we see that perhaps their golf game improves significantly in the visualization treatment, it's hard to say that it was strictly due to visualization and not due to a combination of both um, because we can't erase their brains. We can't erase the techniques that we've taught them. So in this sense, the within subject design would not necessarily be um, the ideal research method to use simply because um, they're taking that information to the different conditions and therefore it's difficult to pinpoint um, any changes that would be due to a particular treatment. So by the time they get to the second condition, it may be a combination of um, other things that they've learned. So again, the main disadvantage is order effects. From what we talked about for the previous research design, the between subject design, the um, repeat measures or within subject design has more advantages. Um, again, the, the biggest one is that it requires less individuals, um, but we do have to be conscientious of the order effects. If you are um, testing something where individuals are learning something and may take that information to the next condition, the within subject design would not be preferred. What you could do instead is use what we refer to as the match subject design, which I'll discuss next. Okay, so finally, the match subject design may be the solution to um, the order effects that we may uh, encounter when using a within subject design. Because the within subject des design has more advantages, it is the preferred design, but again, not always ideal. So if we go back to the example of um, improving your golf game. So we may have subject, or sample, excuse me, sample one, in this case it's the relaxation treatment condition, in sample two we have the visualization technique being taught. Um, and instead of using the same individuals and recycling them into the next condition, instead we would want to, um, you can think of it as find their twin. So we may have a female, a female golfer that on average um, scores four points above par, so plus four above par, so that we'd find another female that has that same record. Then we let's say we have a male and they tend to have um, a record of five, um, five above par and we'd find another male, a different male, that also has a similar record and then perhaps another female which tends to um, play at the level, very high level of um, three above par, so plus three, and then a fem another female, again a separate female, but has this, shares the same characteristic. And then let's say there's another female that on average tends to golf at um, five above par, so plus five. And we find another female, right, that also has the same um, equivalent record in terms of golf game. So this would be um, participant um, one, two, three, four, and this would be 
5, 6, 7, and 8. Again, showing that those are all different individuals. They're all different from each other, but they share these characteristics, gender, and what their average golf game is. And now we expose them to these different treatments, and we can think of those same individuals as it's kind of like their twin. It's a different person, but they have similar characteristics, and now we can get a better assessment of which technique does a better job of improving your golf score. So um, you can think of this as somewhat of a hybrid um, design between the independent measures t-test process what utilizes the between subject design and then the within subject design so it's taking um, advantage of um, the benefits of using a within subject design again um, with the exception of we do need more participants for match subject design but this idea of eliminating um, individual characteristics here we're holding it constant by making sure we have a matched individual in each of the conditions in terms of process of computing your t-statistic, even though we tend to think we would, use, we would need to use the between subject design chapter 10 process because they're different individuals, because they've been matched, then we would use the within subject design technique of, um, of repeat measures. So again, we would use t-test for repeat samples. So I just want to point that out because students often see that we have different individuals and they immediately want to use the um, t-test for independent sample means, but if they've been matched, then the process required um, is to use the repeat measures t-test.